I, for one, have been really enjoying these sunny afternoons here in the UK, which is such a rare thing. But uh, it's been glorious, and I've been loving it. About two years ago to the day, I was here in Hyde Park with a friend recording some samples uh, of various sounds, twigs being snapped, bins being hit, things like that. And it only dawned on me today that I haven't used them at all, um, and I want to turn them into a beat today. Very occasionally you need to be reminded that music is in fact everywhere. So I've got this little beat that I've been working on for the last 10 minutes or so. Let me introduce you to the band UAD Rhodes, the Electra 88 Vintage Keys. It's a lovely sounding instrument and it's playing this little staccato patch at the top. Next, we've got the best bass sound. If you haven't seen above and down below, a little video on how I made this sound. Then we've got a piano doing some kind of long held sustained chords, which actually form some of the melody, if you can call it that. Again, this is just the wing upright mono. For some reason, I like the sound of the mono one. Jake Reed, great drummer. Um, I've taken some one shots from his Super Dead Drums Volume 2 and turned it into a little contact instrument here. Really beautiful drums. I mean, some of the best that I've heard. And they take really well to the sampler, actually. Then I've also got a shaker here from Heat Volume 1. Now, rather than using 16th notes at 88 BPM, I decided to use 8th notes at 160 and then slow them down. The distance between each shake would mean that it just sounds a little tighter. So I've actually got some 16th notes here at 80 BPM, and just have a listen to the difference. much tighter. This is a little panning trick that I learned from Jake Jackson. It's basically just a very small tremolo and it gives the effect of stereo working with a stereo mic or something even if you've just got a mono sound source which these shakers are unfortunately because uh, it would have been nice to have them in stereo. Anyway this takes me back to when I did a session, I say a session, <laughs> I went to the park with a friend and we took this little task cam with us and we decided to record as many random found sounds as possible. And I thought I'd lost them, but I just found them. I've marked 34 of my favourites. It was actually quite funny looking back through some of these because this says 1st of June 2021. I remember this so strongly, I can't believe it's been two years already. Anyway. This camera shutter's cool. Some of these leaves are nice as well. Pass a bike's nice. The fact that we were recording this in stereo means you just have a lovely atmos to the whole thing. Pigeon flight, this is cool. I seem to remember this was take two. It was quite funny because we tried to scare them off the first time and I did it by clapping in a humane way, I have to say, and the clap was too audible. So I realized that instead of actually clapping, you just have to look like you're about to clap and then they'll know what to do. Uh, we've got a siren. And then we've got various taps and scrapes. So as you can imagine, there's a whole playground of sounds here that we could turn into something actually quite useful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag these all into my timeline and I'm going to create new tracks. And there they all are in their glory. Now, what I probably should have done is turn this into a contact instrument ahead of time, um, but I haven't done that because I've only just realized that I wanted to make this video. So what I'm going to do instead is just line them up the old school way. So I'm going to try and find the kick drum that gives me the most energy. So that one there is quite thumpy, and I like that there's a bit of noise as well. First of all, I'm going to cut a little bit of the end off that. Yeah, that's cool. Let's keep this simple for now. Let's just put this on all of the downbeats. This can be our main kick. I suppose the thing with found sounds is that you want them to feel as different as possible so that it adds to the kind of randomness of the whole thing. You don't want it to substitute the kick drum in the actual drum kit. Okay, what's this shoots and leaves? 
That's a very cool snare drum sound, isn't it? You see how this is coming together? I like this a lot. You know, I've just realized I should do this on the second of each cycle because then that makes it feel a little more random. On these sort of fourth bars, I might want to add just a little something to kind of fade us into what the next thing's going to be. What's, a, what's this tree scrape? Jesus Christ. That's a bit aggressive. So with these sounds, I might I might throw them in somewhere. I'm going to cut this down massively so that it's nice and short, punchy. No, you know what? No. That's quite cool. You can do a thing where you, if you have a fade, you can control click and then and speed up rather than fade in. I know a lot of people would disagree, but I think that's kind of cool. Of course, not trying to capitalize on other people's pain and suffering. That's a nice little kind of segue into the second section, I think. Might go really well with the eats, shoots and leaves. As with this pigeon fight, to be fair. Sorry, flight, not fight. That could be a nice sort of um, straight on the on the downbeat there. It's like we've scared the pigeons away and now the police are coming after us. And of course we know this because pigeons poo everywhere and they never get arrested. So we know that the police and the birds are on the same team. I feel like I'm really disrespecting the eat shoots and leaves now. I think I should have paid more attention to that. Maybe it just needs to be quieter. That's also an option. Ah, I think it's this. Yeah, don't need that. Cool, what else? So I'm copying these over so that we've got a bit more consistency. I want everyone to know that I'm kicking bins throughout this track. Yeah, you haven't got to that section yet, but that's pretty spicy. So you've got to earn your keep here. You've really got to, you can't just skip to the end. Now, what I find interesting is that this as a sample gets boring when you hear it the second or third time. But what you can do is transpose it. Let's say four semitones. What happens then? So this is what it sounds like. Does it sound better, worse? You know, it's nice. Adds a little flavor. Again, I haven't EQ'd this at all yet, so let's just put a little EQ on this. All right, we're gonna need to do a lot to enhance the bass on this. In case you're wondering, the resonant frequency of the bin in Hyde Park is about 124 hertz. We're gonna need to really ramp that up. There's a click around 1K-ish that I don't like. Horrible. So here's our before and after before. After. That rattle that I thought was cool is not that cool, is it? Ugh. Just sounds like a bin now. So I'm gonna start trying to incorporate some rhythm now into this because otherwise it's just gonna be a bit of a drumbeat copycat, so I don't want that. Now, if you've got a fairly basic, boring sound like this, and you want to spice it up a little bit, then I'd really recommend Shade. Um, what you can do is all kinds of crazy stuff. That's cool, isn't it? I think we've got to end on a xylo bench slide. 
We're like, we had fun, but now we're going home. Come on, kids, get your... That's the kind of sound I want. Where can I find that sound? It's not there. A lot of these are just very violent. Ed, if you're watching, I forgot. I forgot that we were so boisterous. Oh, that's cool. I love that. Right, let's get some of that in. we probably don't need that fade after all. Much better. So I'm going to do a two-stage motion here. I'm using a high-pass filter cutoff here, which means that it's not going to compress based on information below 100 hertz or wherever we end up. I'm also going to send all of these to a few buses and I'm going to show you how I would use these buses to add some cool parallel compression. It's been quite a long time since I posted on this channel. I realise I haven't been the best friend to you all, but I hope you're doing well and I've been taking some time to reflect on what I think this content should be. It's funny that I get nervous taking a camera out in Hyde Park, but don't get nervous about sharing a video of me in my studio to an audience of like nearly 25,000 people. In the last few weeks and months, I've realized that a lot of the content that I watch on YouTube, I'm not particularly excited about. And this has made me just not really want to post videos uh, until I figured out somewhat of a format. I want to make these videos a little more informal. I want to incorporate more of my life into them, make them less about just content, just sitting in a studio, and make that sort of like a, an A narrative with this being a part B. I don't know what that's going to look like at the moment, but I need to start making these videos again because I've got something quite exciting coming out later this year and I need to get this channel moving and growing and getting excited. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an all-in-one platform for developing or exploring new skills, whether you're looking to level up your creative hobbies or turn that side hustle into a business. As a creative and someone who started posting their own videos on their own YouTube channel, you'd think I have it all together, but I really don't, and I've used Skillshare for years to help me fill in the blanks. It's where I first learned how to edit on Final Cut Pro. It's where I learned how to design this awesome poster. And now it's where I'm learning to manage the financial aspect of my website. Who knows, I might start a Shopify and start selling these things. No goal is too small. I think it can feel quite daunting to think about your future and what might be possible, but Skillshare helps break it down into much smaller, much more manageable chunks. I've been watching Finding Success Online, Grow Your Social Following into a Creative Business by Kate Ahrens. I'm only a few classes in so far, but I'm learning a lot about how to run a structure for a more stable self-run business. The first 1,000 people to click the link down below will get a free one-month trial to Skillshare, so check it out and get a month on me. Select these, Control T to create a track. Now I'm going to make sure they're inside this track because I want them all going to the bus. First step is to create a parallel crush bus. Now fortunately I've done this work for us. This parallel crush bus is a combination of some of my favourite plugins. Baby Audio's Smooth Operator, the Veramu by Pulsar, which is absolutely fantastic, and I Heart New York, also by Baby Audio. I'm going to do a video about Baby Audio soon because they're awesome. Remember, right now we're only hearing the crush bus. Second thing is a non-lin, a non-linear reverb. This is going to give it a sense of space that it so deserves. Next thing I'm going to add is a lovely, lovely channel strip that I've made, which is called Relentless Movement because what it does is it just hyperizes everything.
I'm going to apply a little bit of Shapeshifter just to destroy it a little bit. Nothing destroys like Shapeshifter destroys. But it's Decapitator as well. A bit of distortion never hurt anyone. Let's uh, have a listen to the drums we started with. Now, I'm not saying it's the best beat in the world. In fact, I'm not even saying that it works. But it's fun and it's different and it adds just a little bit of interest if I turn it off and turn it back on again. A couple of changes I made in that. I didn't like the reverb. The Jake Reed drums are dry. I should have kept it dry, bone dry. Also, the relentless movement was just too relentless. So that hasn't worked out either. But it's okay because I like to think about it like carving wood. You have to carve away everything that isn't an owl before you end up with an owl. Um, so let me just mute this and then play it with the drums, with and without, and you can see whether you like it or not. Boring, right? Now, a few things that you could do if you don't have a nearby park or you don't have an iPhone that you could go and record with um, is just take household objects. I mean, I might do this again, depending on the success of this video, um, but it's a little sounds like this. Could be cool. Um, just bashing your piano or your or your table. Sounds pretty cool. I have a little um, wooden bowl with some SD cards on it, and I was experimenting earlier. You could do this. Lots of stuff. I mean, music is everywhere, but particularly rhythm. I've had a lot of fun making this video. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. Subscribe if you haven't done already. And I'll see you again very soon. I'm really, really going to try and get back into doing this on a regular basis.